Hello guys, uh, welcome back. In this video, we will learn the parent constraint in Maya software. Uh, right now, I've just created a polygon cube and just I would like to place it uh, here. And also, I'll just create a uh, sphere. I'll uh, freeze the transformation and delete the history. Okay, uh, so we have uh, the cube and we have the sphere. So I'm selecting the cube and then sphere which is uh, in a sequence of parent and then child so the first object becomes a parent and the second object becomes a child and then go to the rigging section and then open the constraint and then you have the parent constraint here uh, in point constraint you have uh, the translation channel control and in a rotation channel you have uh, sorry in orient constraint you have the rotation channel but parent will actually control uh, the translation and rotation both. So what I am going to do here is I am going to uh, duplicate this, uh, make a copy of this and then try to uh, see the comparative difference between uh, uh, point, point orient and parent constraint. So let me select the parent and then child cube is a parent and sphere is a child and then apply the parent constraint then you should able to see the sphere has not moved its placement anywhere so it's there and then uh, you should able to see that the child object uh, the translation and rotation channels are connected uh, you could uh, see that they are in blue color so if I select those channels okay and apply a key then you will get an option called blend parent which will actually allow you to switch between keyframe animation and constraint so if the value is zero that means you can move the child object with keyframes and if it is one it will move along with its parent so that's one thing and uh, if you could able to see here we have uh, in attribute editor the channels turn to green and if I go to the extra attributes, you have the blend parent attribute uh, here. So if, if it is zero, the object may not control it. If I put it to one, then you see the control is on there. And uh, uh, if I generally move the parent and then rotate the parent, you see the child is moving and rotating along with it now you might be thinking okay can we apply point and orient and then is it same that's a big question so what i'm going to do is for the sake of uh, visual understanding i'm going to um, make it l more like a ellipse shape okay just uh, freeze the transformation and then i'm going to select and then apply point constraint when I apply point constraint you see um, if, I, if I do the default settings uh, you may see the child shifting its placement uh, so the position are aligned so what we are going to do is to match like parent constraint in point I'm going to switch on the maintain offset and then add it now I should able to see when I move both the uh, parent objects in parent constraint uh, the the look is same there's no difference now let me apply orient constraint here okay now you see the difference the translation is same but when i rotate it uh, in the parent constraint you could see that uh, uh, the child is moving uh, from the parents pivot point whereas the point orient method when I am rotating the parent the child is rotating on its own pivot point so that's one major difference you see if you apply uh, parent constraint and if you apply point and orient constraint the difference okay that's very important difference between these two things okay and uh, let's say if I apply a scale constraint okay and then here also apply the scale constraint 
okay and then scale both of them then you should able to see the scale is actually um, it's like a one piece of object it, when I'm scaling it as if the it's it's like a trophy and then it's scaling like a trophy but here when I'm scaling it you should able to see the a child is scaling on its own pivot point and this happens only when parent scale combination point orient scale combination is there you see the difference okay so here I took parents and scale combination here point orient scale combination you have both so that's really important when you are like choosing between parent and point orient because you think that okay parent controls translation and rotation what if if I take point orient point orient separately I'm, I'm just trying to compare both of these things now let me uh, duplicate these two things here modify freeze transformation and then uh, in this case I'm going to choose uh, the normal parenting method now let me select these three and then move okay they, they look same rotate uh, parent constraint and parenting look same scale parenting and parent constraint look same but point orient is completely different in that method now you, you might be thinking can we directly use parenting instead of using parent constraint is constraint good or parenting good uh, in constraining um, one good thing you have is at any period of timeline you can switch off the parenting and then switch on the parenting in the time that's possible that means let's say first 15 frames I don't want this parenting to affect okay then after 15 frames the parenting should affect and uh, I can do that okay sorry I need to put it 1 and on 15 frame I'll put it 0 I should able to see in the first few frames the parenting doesn't work and later the parenting works so in time you can choose between parenting okay uh, you can put parenting on and you can put parenting off but here that's not possible if I've made it as parent and child no matter whatever it is the parenting will be there unless until you bring it out from the parent and child relationship so that's very important so that's where the choice between parenting and parenting constraint comes so what has to be picked you can decide that way okay so that's really important to understand when you're doing this constraint